My name is Paula and I'm a driver trainer here for Campbell County Schools. Today we're going to be uh, going through the entire pre-trip session, the spoken test that you will have to take in order to finish out your CDL to be a school bus driver. We're going to go through every piece of the bus and explain those to you and uh, you're going to have to mimic what I do today in order to get your test. A couple of uh, just thoughts at the beginning. If it is steel, it is not cracked or broken. If it's a light, it's a proper color, not faded, cracked or broken. If it carries air, any form of a liquid or water at all, any kind of liquid, it is not leaking and it is the hose is not dry rotted. And for the wiring, it is not arcing. Those things must be said about every piece of the bus as you go through. It gets a little repetitious, but it's what you must do in order to get your CDL. As we approach our bus, the first thing we're going to look at is the stance of our bus, the posture of our bus. Is it leaning to one side or the other that could indicate we had a flat tire or a possible suspension problem? I would look under my bus checking for leaks or debris that could have been drug in improperly. Then we're going to start at the top of the bus and work my way all the way down the front. At the very top, we have our clearance lights. They are amber. They are the proper color, not faded, cracked, or broken. Under that, we have our school bus sign. It is reflective tape and it is not peeling and reads properly. Outside that, we have our amber lights being uh, the loading and unloading eight-way lights. They're the amber on the inside, the red is to the outside. Making one more step down, we have the seal around the windshield. The seal itself doesn't appear to be dry rotted or damaged in any way. My windshield is relatively clean. The glass is clear. It has no illegal stickers and there are no obstructions on the windshield. Then you must pull yourself up and check the windshield wiper. It has proper tension, the blade is not dry rotted, the hose is not leaking. While I'm here, the West Coast mirrors the glass is relatively clean, the seals are not dry rotted, the glass is not damaged, and the wire is not arcing. The hood latches, they're properly uh, securely mounted with all bolts in place. They are made of rubber, they are not dry rotted. And I have my mud flap, which is securely mounted with all bolts in place, and it is properly mounted and not dry rotted. The next item that I have would be my uh, turn signals and these are also my four-way hazards. They are securely mounted all bolts in place. The lenses are the proper color, not faded, cracked, or broken, and that's amber in the front and red in the back. My crossover mirrors, again the glass relatively clean, seals are not dry rotted, and it is securely mounted with all bolts in place. You note that I am not doing both sides of the bus. I would indicate to my examiner that I would be checking the entire bus if it were a typical day on my route, but for the purpose of this test, I only have to check one of each item. My headlights, clean, clear, high beam, low beam. Turn signals are also in here on this model of bus. Crossing gate, opens and closes freely and appears to not be damaged or cracked. We're going to start right in this area on the door side of the bus. This piece right here is the alternator. It's securely mounted with all bolts in place. It is an electrical unit. It does not appear to be arcing and it is belt driven. This particular belt cannot have more than three quarters of an inch of play when pushed by hand. It does not appear to be dry rotted, damaged, or frayed in any way. The other belt driven piece on this bus is the water pump and it's right down in here. The water pump is not leaking. It's securely mounted with all bolts in place. And again, it is belt driven. This is my frame. My frame has two members like this that are longitudinal parts. And then it has cross members that run across those two longitudinal members. I'm looking at the frame, making sure that it doesn't appear to have any stress cracks, any unnecessary holes or any rust that could be causing a structural problem to my bus. We'll be checking the cross members as we go further through the bus. The next item we will look at is our leaf springs. Our leaf springs are properly stacked. They're not missing, shifted, or cracked. And we can check that right here as we look at the U-bolts securely mounted to the axle and the leaf springs are intact and stacked properly all the way back here toward the back. 
we have the shackles or the um, spring mounts. This is what holds those springs in place. There's this one that's toward the rear and there's another one toward the front. They are made of steel and they are not cracked or broken in any way that is visual. The next item I have will go into um, the shock. The shock is securely mounted with all bolts in place. It is fully extended and it is not leaking. If it were leaking, it would be leaking right there. The next item that we're gonna talk about is our braking system. This bus does have air brakes and this nice line right here is made of rubber. It doesn't appear to be cracked or dry rotted. It carries air and I don't hear anything leaking. So I will at this point say that it is not leaking. That air line runs up here into the brake chamber. The brake chamber is two pieces of steel that are held together by the brake band and they work together as a function with the brakes. They don't appear to be damaged or dented in any way. This little fingerling right down in there is the push rod. The push rod works along with the slack adjuster to allow air in and out of the chamber. And anytime you see a cotter pin like that one right there, say the cotter pin is in place. If I were to pull the slack adjuster by hand, it cannot have more than one inch of travel. On the inside of the tire, This cover right here is called the dust cover. It has these little slit holes in it right down here. You don't ever want to see anything coming out of those little slits. Inside that dust cover is your brake drum, which is made of steel, so you don't want to see any steel shavings coming out that little slit, nor do you want to see anything that looks like cotton candy that could be your um, fiberglass brake lining starting to come out. As you talk about your wheel, make sure you talk about the inside and the outside of the wheel on all your parts. So the next item that we have is our rim. We'll look at it from the outside. On the rim, we're looking for any kind of rust trails that could compromise the integrity of the rim inside and outside. We're looking for uh, anything that might be cracked or welded. There are no welds allowed on rims of school buses. We will be looking at our lug bolts and our lug nuts, making sure that they are all in place and we don't want to see anything shiny that could indicate that we have something that's loose and wobbling. This is a hub oil seal. This is full of oil. It should never be leaking. A drip is not a problem, but if you get a puddle right here, you got a problem. This is your hub oil seal. We have a valve stem that also has a cap, which is mandated. Our tires themselves must match on the front and no recaps are allowed. You must have a minimum of 430 seconds of tread on your tires. And we're always looking for abrasions, bruises, and cuts on the sidewalls where we run up against sidewalks to assure the safety of our children. Be very careful about rubbing your tire too much in that fashion. No abrasions, bruises, or cuts on your sidewalls. The next item that we're gonna look at is our windshield washer fluid container reservoir. It is securely mounted with all bolts in place. It has a proper level. It doesn't appear to be leaking in the hose and there is a wire there that pumps that fluid out and it does not appear to be arcing. Overall, I take just a second to look at this side of my bus and make sure that I have covered all the parts that are necessary. When you're taking your test, if you miss something, it's gonna affect the rest of your test. But during your test, at any point, you remember something you missed. You may say it out loud immediately and you will be given credit for it. As a, for instance, something as small as a valve stem. If I had missed that, I could get credit for it by picking up on it later in my test. I will look at all my hoses to make sure I don't see anything leaking and all my wiring to make sure that I do not see anything that might be arcing. And I believe we got it all. We are gonna to walk to the other side of the bus and as I walk around, I will make the statement that says, everything I just checked on this side of the bus, I will also check on the other side of the bus. But for the purpose of today's test, I am only going to show you what's different on the other side. As we go across this side of the bus, the first thing we're gonna talk about is our coolant reservoir. Our coolant reservoir appears to be securely mounted with all bolts in place. The hose is not leaking, doesn't appear to be dry rotted, and my wire is not arcing. This is my oil dipstick to check the oil or the transmission fluid. We would check them the same by pull wipe restick check, but we would check the uh, transmission 
while the bus is running and the oil we would check while the bus is off. As we come on across the top, this hose right here is a steel braided hose. It is the strongest hose on this bus and it carries back to the air compressor. It is the only hint that you have that there is an air compressor on this bus because it's back up underneath the driver's seat somewhere. Once you see this hose, you must tell your examiner that your air compressor is securely mounted or appears to be a securely mounted. I don't hear anything, so it's not leaking and appears to be functioning properly at this time, but you must mention that. Your air compressor is also gear driven. Remember the other side of the bus was belt driven. This side is all gear driven. The other part of this bus that is gear driven is the power steering pump. And it is right down in there where I'm pointed to. But it is gear driven and it is on the other end of this hose right here. That should help to remind you that it's back there. It appears to be securely mounted. I don't see anything dripping so it's not leaking. The hose here that it takes the fluid to it does not appear to be dry rotted or leaking. My power steering fluid reservoir is securely mounted with all bolts in place. It has a proper level and I don't see anything that would say that it is leaking. My steering mechanism. This is my steering shaft. It appears to be straight and undamaged. On each end there are knuckles and those knuckles are properly lubed. This is the gearbox. It's securely mounted with all bolts in place and if it were leaking, it would be leaking right there at that little joint and I don't see anything that is leaking. The next item that we have is the pitman arm, the drag link, and down here underneath you may not be able to see there is a rod that is holding all of these together. My tie rod. I'll get the stick on in here in a second. There it is right there. That's the tie rod. So again, that is the tie rod. That one's the tie rod, the drag link, and the pitman arm. We group all those together. They are securely mounted. All bolts are in place. They do not appear to be damaged. And all of my cotter pins are in place. All of my wiring is mostly concentrated in this area. I don't see anything that's arcing. I don't see any hoses that appear to be leaking. Scanning to make sure I got all the parts that I must describe completely knowing that everything I checked on the other side, I would normally check on this side. I'll be shutting the hood now. Looking at this entire side of the bus, we'll start at the top and work our way down. We have clearance lights. There are two yellow ones and everything in the back is red. They're securely mounted. All bolts are in place. They're proper color, not faded, cracked, or broken. The next thing I see is my reflective tape. I can see that I have different colorations of reflective tape down the entire side of the bus. Everything is securely mounted. They are not, don't appear to be peeling. And all of my emergency windows with a uh, reflective tape are also securely mounted. My windows themselves are relatively clean. Uh, they are not cracked or broken. And I don't see any illegal stickers. I can't put my little unicorn there and I can't put I heart my army son here. It is against the law in a Kentucky school bus. There is a seal in here and the seals appear to be secure and not dry rotted. I saw a little black flipper running through there. I would know I had a broken seal. My stop sign is securely mounted. It opens freely. The reflective tape reads correctly. My lenses are proper color, not faded, cracked, or broken. My wiring is not arcing. My cable is not frayed. My cotter pins are in place and my boot is not dry rotted and it swings shut properly. We'll talk about this emergency door. We've already talked about the seals around the windows. It's intact, the glass is intact. It's properly labeled for emergency. It opens properly. The hinges are not rusted and appear to be uh, working properly. The bracket here at the top is a locking mechanism that makes that door stay open. The seal around the outside is intact and not dry rotted. The threshold is relatively clean and I don't see any hazards for the students as they would exit the bus. It unlocks and secures properly. This is my drive shaft. It appears to be straight. The knuckles are lubed and I don't see any debris hung up in them. And the safety hangers are in place. Behind that, I have my exhaust system. It is securely mounted. 
And here we have the male-female connections where I do not see any soot, extra holes, or rust issues. This is that longitudinal frame we talked about earlier, and we start to be able to see these cross members up in there. On the back axle, there are five items back here that are different than any other part of the bus. Those five items would be my torque arm and my torsion bar. We cannot necessarily see those unless they're broken. They're right in the middle of the bus in the axle area uh, above the differential, and we really can't see them. But if you ever see something hanging and don't belong there, then that's probably your torque arm or your torsion bar. That's one of the items that's different. Another one of the items that's different is this airbag right here. It is made out of rubber, feels a little bit like a football, it needs to be fully inflated, and because it's rubber, we don't want to see um, any dry rot or any signs of cracking or damage. In the back, we do have four tires, and they are allowed to have two 30 seconds of tread. The bud spacing between them must be even all the way around, and we're looking to make sure we're not dragging any debris, whether it be a cup or a strap or a tree limb. Make sure you're not dragging any debris. This is an axle flange gasket, and it is called that in the rear where it was called differently in the front. Make sure it is secure, all the bolts are in place, and it is not leaking. Now, so far as the other items that we would need to check at this back axle, there are four suspension items that we would need to check, and I would check those the same as I would on that front right corner. So make sure you get it right up there, and you're allowed to refer to it back here during your test. Those four items are my shackles, my springs, my U-bolts, and my shocks. Then there are 13 items concerning the braking system and the wheels that I would check the same as I did up front. Back here, I only have to name those 13 items. So here we go. We've got the airlines the, that carry the air into the brakes. We've got the brake chamber, the brake band, the push rod, the pin and cotter pins, the slack adjuster, the dust cover, the brake drums, the brake linings, the rims, the lug nuts, the tires, and the valve stems, 13. This is a reverse light that I don't have to talk about, but I do. And on the back of the bus, here we go again. At the top, I've got my clearance lights, which are the proper color. In this case, they're red, not faded, cracked, or broken, properly attached. I have my amber lights and my uh, red lights that are part of my eight-way system, proper color, not faded, cracked, or broken. The school bus reflective tape and all of the reflective tape appears to be properly mounted. It doesn't appear to be peeling, and it is all legible. My glass is relatively clean. My seals are not dry rotted. And here we have my turn signals and my hazard lights. These are large and small brake lights. They are also my tail lights, but there are two and must be accounted for. We lovingly refer to them as our big brake light and our little brake light when you need repair. This is your backup light. This has a light for my license plate and my license plate is present and my um, tailpipe must be one inch past my bumper. I would check this door the same as I did the one on the far side. I will open it, lock it into position, and the main thing I'm checking for here is that this seal is intact and not dry rotted so that fumes will not enter the bus. Otherwise, I would check everything same as I did on the other side. Under my bus, I'm checking for leaks and debris. I have a welded cage that holds my fuel tank and there are straps in there that hold that fuel tank into place inside this cage. Nothing is leaking, everything appears to be secure. Come around this side of the bus. Everything I checked on the other side, I would check over here again. I'm only gonna point out to you the differences. One of those differences is this baggage container. It opens freely. I have my chalk that I will be needing in just a couple minutes, so I'll take opportunity to chalk my bus. I have three reflective emergency triangles. The seal is here to keep water from getting into the uh, compartment and rusting it, and it latches properly. My diesel fuel door opens properly. 
appears to be in working condition. Every time I fuel, I'll need to take that cap off and check to be sure that the seal is there. You do not have to remove it the day of your test. He don't want you to smell like diesel fuel, but you must tell him you'll be checking that seal. Secures properly. Everything in this rear axle that I checked on the other side, I would check again. And if you've done it properly on the other side, you do not have to do it again. But again, if you missed your valve stem up front, you just lost it on the far side, the other side, and this side. Pick it up and catch it wherever you can. This is my DEF fluid, my diesel exhaust fluid. Well, the mechanics take care of that one, and they, you can scratch that because they take care of that, and they got that one locked on me. But anyway, diesel exhaust fluid, the man, mechanics take care of that. But that's where it's put in. My doors appear to be functioning properly, the hinges are working properly, glass is relatively clean, the seals around that's not dry rotted, and the seals for my doors themselves are uh, is not dry rotted and appears to be in good working condition. The steps, I don't see any trip hazards, all the tread seems to be mounted properly. A handrail, securely mounted, and my step light. We'll check it later to make sure it's working, but it's proper color, not faded, cracked, or broken. My fire extinguisher is the ABC type, is securely mounted, properly tagged, properly pinned, gauges in the green. The other thing we'll talk about before we enter the bus is my spill kit and my first aid kit. They are both properly stocked, and there are three spare fuses that match this bus in that spill kit. All right, as soon as I sit in the driver's seat, I want to make sure that it is securely mounted and not going to fall off its perch during my run. I want to make sure that the seat belt is not frayed or damaged and latches properly. Be looking at my windshield from the inside, making sure it's not cracked or damaged, and the seal is also not dry rotted. My student mirror shows me the front seat all the way to the back seat, and the seal is intact. My mirrors are properly adjusted for me for this test today, and I would adjust those over here if it were necessary. We'll take opportunity to go through a safe start. I want to make sure that I turn my key one click. I want to make sure my ABS light comes on and goes off. Make sure I'm in neutral. My parking brake is properly set. I see the indicator there. I would put my foot firmly on the service brake and I would start the bus. For this filming, we are not gonna start it because of noise control. Then I would unhook my seat belt while the bus has the opportunity to warm up and I'm gonna go to the back of the bus and check all of my safety. The bus will be checking the floor tread to make sure that there aren't any trip hazards. As I go to the back, I will be checking all of my seats to make sure that they're firmly attached to the bus. I don't see any graffiti or damage. I'll also note that there are four emergency windows. I'll be checking one for the purpose of the test today. There are two emergency doors. I will be checking one for the purpose of the test today. There are two emergency exits, and I will also only be checking one of those for the purpose of the test today. I'll check this door the same way I checked the one on the outside. I will note that the alarm sounds and that it, uh, the seals are intact. There are three head bumpers on this bus, front door, emergency side, and side rear. They are intact and securely mounted. Emergency window, all emergency exits properly labeled. It sounds, it opens freely, and it closes securely. We will check this roof hatch. My strobe light is working. test. There's no problem with any alarm ever going off as long as you know what it is and how to stop it. As soon as we sit back down and have our seat belt back on, 
be grabbing the steering wheel. This is a 20 inch wheel and it has no more than two inches of play. We'll be looking at our internal cockpit first. I have a left turn signal and I know it's working because I have an indicator. I have a right turn signal with an indicator and I have four way hazards with an indicator. I have windshield wipers on low, medium, high, and I have fluid. Okay. Going into the dash. My DEF, which is diesel exhaust fluid, should never be less than half. My water sh temperature should be between 160 and 180. If my engine were running, these would probably be right. But I want to tell you what the operating temperature is, uh, not what I'm reading. Okay. The oil pressure should be between 40 and 50. I know that my RPMs are working when I tap the gas pedal. Speedometer will be checking later. Volts run between 12 and 14. The fuel should never be less than half. And I have two brake tanks, one being a primary and a secondary brake tank. This is my parking brake. This is my service brake. This is my accelerator. And this is my gear shift. But at this time, I would be checking my um, gear shift, running through all of the gears along with reverse to make sure that my alarm were working properly. This is optional radio equipment and it is not necessary to test during the, to describe during the test. Down here I have my headlights and beside that I have a dimmer switch. Beside that I have a dimmer switch would take, take my dimmer panel all the way up and all the way down. That was my alarm. Go through all of my fan buttons turning each one on, checking it, and then turning it off and calling them by name. My midship heater, they are all labeled. All you need to do is read through them properly. This here in the center is a defroster for my electric West Coast mirrors. My strobe light is currently on. My dome lights, I would turn them on and check them, making sure that they worked properly. And I have a driver's light and dome lights in the rear. This row here is the most important row on the bus because it is the safety precautions that we take to load and unload our students correctly. In order to demonstrate this, it is very important that you do it in order and by step. The first one we'll push is the yellow flashers. I know that they're on because of the amber flasher button in my dash, the indicator in my dash. Then I would turn it to red, my stop arm comes out, my red flashers come on, that indicates that my eight ways are working properly and my crossing gate open. I would be able to open the door to receive my student. I would be able to shut the door. And when necessary, especially on school property, I would cancel my crossing gate so that students don't walk into it and break it off. If you break off your crossing gate, it is a red line for your bus because it's safety equipment. And then my red's still on out here. Cancel the system. I've got another hazard here. I know it's working because of the uh, indicator in the dash. And the noise kill, the noise suppression button we have here, if I turn on the heater, I have a button that cancels all electrical power on the bus. I need that for a railroad crossing or should an administrator or a parent approach my bus. I have an override button. It will override my eight ways. Those are my loading and unloading lights. I'll give you, for instance, if I am started my yellows 200 feet out, I know my yellows are working. I'm approaching Bobby's house and mom steps out and tells me, go on, he's not coming today. I can override and cancel that without opening my door. Very important safety feature. All these little knobs work to allow air in for the driver, whether it's heat off of the engine or fresh air through the summer. Scanning across, it would appear that I have finished my cockpit. So I do have a couple more tests. I would send Mr. Uh, state trooper out to check all of my lights and I would go through a complete light system allowing him to acknowledge that he knows that all my lights are working properly. I would need to do headlights, bright lights, I would need to do my yellows and my ambers for, um, I mean my yellows and my reds for my eight-way system. 
I would need to do left and right turn signals as well as my hazards in the front. In the rear, I would do all of the lights that are back there being my uh, tail lights. I would need to use brake lights, four-way hazards, reverse lights, and all of my loading and unloading lights, being sure that he acknowledges each of them. The front he'll acknowledge in the front, the rear he'll acknowledge through that mirror right there to know that all my lights are working properly and that I know how to function them. One of the most important parts of your CDL test with your state trooper examiner is your lab test. Lab stands for leaks, alarms, and buttons. We're going to check our air brakes. We will be getting an audible alarm during this test, so prepare yourself for that noise. I would turn my bus, I would turn my bus to the um, on auxiliary position and I would release my parking brake. If you recall, I chalked it, so we should be good not to roll. And I'm going to shut my bus off and I'm going to turn on the accessory. No child. I must hit the no child left behind button to keep it from beeping that I've lost a child on my bus. Okay, now we're going to do our lab test. We're checking for leaks and alarms and buttons in our air braking system, which is these two gauges right here. We are securely at 120 pounds of pressure. My key is in the on position. I have chalked my bus, so I am going to release my parking brake and allow the bus to settle on the chalk. I lose just a little bit of air pressure and then I begin my test. With no brake applied on the foot brake or the parking brake, I don't want to lose any more than two PSI in one full minute. For the purpose of this filming, we're going to move on. 58, 59, 60 seconds have passed. I would put my foot firmly on the service brake, watching the gauges to lose not more than three PSI pounds of pressure in one full minute. For the purpose of today's filming, we will say that 58, 59, 60 seconds have passed. They're holding securely. Now I will begin to fan those brakes and at approximately 60 pounds of pressure, I will get both a visual and an audible alarm. And between 40 and 20, the brake has applied itself that would stop the bus and not allow any danger to come to my students. We will restart the bus and allow it to build. We have two more brake tests that we're gonna do. One will be to check the parking brake. The other will be to check the service brake. The first one that we'll be doing is to check the parking brake. Parking brake is set. My indicator shows me that it is set. We will drop the bus into drive and we will grab the engine to 1100 RPM the bus does not move, we know our parking brake is set properly. Now I'm in drive, I will release my parking brake and I will roll the bus forward to five miles an hour, checking to make sure that when I apply the service brake, it doesn't grab and pull me to the left or to the right, which would indicate my brakes might need adjustment. So we're getting ready to roll. Five miles an hour, a nice smooth stop, no pull in either direction. When you're testing with your third party examiner, you would allow your bus to continue running. But for the purpose of today's videotaping, I will take a minute to just do a full sweep on my bus and think to myself, have I done everything I was supposed to do? Because this is my CDL exam, which will allow me to get my uh, passenger and school bus endorsement to drive a school bus. We certainly want to make sure it's right. When you know you're done, toot your horn. <laughs>